Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Fantastic Journey by developer Kaiser J. This is an early version of an upcoming first person surreal platformer done in Unreal Engine 4 and it is really quite interesting. Uh, I have to say I played a few minutes of this and I was rather uh, overtaken by the sights and sounds uh, that abound around me. So let's look at the graphic settings. There isn't much to see at this point. Still early on, like I said. There's just some shadow settings. We can go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll leave it at 4. I believe I'm leaving it at 4 anyway. I can't really tell if uh, I'm actually clicking the right button there. But let's just hit start, and I will go over what it is that we're going to see here. Uh, this game was actually apparently designed for children, but I found it quite visually pleasing regardless. I guess that's never really stopped me before. And the developer cites it as a cross between Jumping Flash, Zelda, and Metroid Prime. So, like, all of those things together... Uh, sound fantastic, and due to the fact this is done in UE4, it actually was able to give me some rock-solid 60 FPS when recording in 1080p, uh, which is great. This is uh, everything I could ask for in terms of optimization. So, first thing that we're seeing here, vivid, bold, crazy colors in all directions, and I have to say the title screen obviously doesn't do the game any justice. It looks very simplistic uh, from what you see there. But, trust me, there is some pretty cool production value going on. This actually, uh, outside, I definitely see, like, the Jumping Flash uh, reference. But it also has a little bit of a Katamari and Lovely Planet vibe as well, just due to the just garish, bright, freaking wild colors. Not to mention that everything is reflective. Uh, as you can see, the floor is actually, it's got a really interesting, like, textured effect to it. Uh, and there's also some arbitrary lens flares happening. I think it's actually these bee enemies that are firing uh, bullets at us. We can also fire bullets by left-clicking, and they'll bounce around and leave crazy particle effects and bounce off of things and, and be weird like that. The bushes also seem to be somewhat reflective. Even the trees seem to be somewhat reflective. And you can see everything's got dynamic shadows and animates, and you'll even notice probably the... Uh, the shadows are actually moving because there's a dynamic day-night cycle, which is something that I didn't expect at all to run into in a game like this. Uh, of course, some of the trees aren't quite rooted to the ground, or maybe that was just an optical illusion there, but we'll, uh, we'll find some that definitely aren't. Uh, let's head towards this big Beetlejuice column over here and see if this leads us to anything. Uh, I did walk around a little bit in this. I spent maybe about five minutes trying to get acclimated. Uh, it looks like there's actually a bunch to see and do here, and even through the time that I spent with this uh, experience, I don't feel like I necessarily saw everything there was to see. Uh, there were some screenshots on the place that I pulled this from that looked like they were interior environments, and all I'd seen was exterior environments, so uh, it seems like the exploration is a thing that you'll definitely want to spend some time doing. I freaking love this color scheme. It's so wild. Like, look at this ground texture. What's going on here? It's like pulling reflections from everything, and it's created this whole new feeling to it. I've never really seen anything quite like that before. Uh, it almost looks like everything is coated in black chrome. And then you've got these bright neon vivid colors just juxtaposing that bright chrome uh, effect. So it's uh, we're going to come out into a larger open area in a second here, and it looks like we're just about to get into uh, Dawn, which... Uh, Definitely sort of gives you a sense of placement in something like this, where everything is super surreal and weird, uh, to all of a sudden have a few things that are sort of harken back to reality, such as a day-night cycle and clouds. Well, it sort of makes you think we're in a hyper-realistic, uh, like, over-generalized cartoon manifestation of the world that we actually live in, which is just an interesting way to look at things. Uh, you'll notice, too, as I zoom around with the reticle and the crosshair here, it actually also casts a reflection, which is not something I expected to see. Um, not really sure it needs to cast a reflection, but, you know, it does, and that just kind of looks cool. Uh, so, yeah, we've got some daylight here. We've got these big old jelly flubber trees off in the distance uh, that are very, very reflective. They, they, everything seems to have bump mapping in this game, which is kind of cool. Uh, also, we've got some pyramids, some cel-shaded looking clouds, an indicator up there that says next level at uh, 1360 meters, which is pretty far away from where we're at right now. I guess this is where we want to head to, and maybe when we get up there, it'll indicate something about where I go next. Uh, if you're wondering, I do have a jump, but it's extremely low, so I'm not going to be doing much platforming to get up to these uh, upper echelons and try and climb this tower. What I think I do want to do, though, is try and find a way to get up onto uh, some of the tops of these trees, uh, because there's actually a, a complicated little, like, bridge system going on that links these islands, and if I can get over to them, maybe I can figure out a way to get up even higher. Uh, 
in my experience of wandering around in this landscape, I didn't really get beyond just getting up to one of these bridges, and I feel like I did it the wrong way. I'm not sure if there is a right way, uh, but the way I got up there didn't feel like it def def definitely made much sense. I kind of ended up sort of repelling between two mountains that sort of pushed me up higher, and then I got hit by a bee, which knocked me up in the air, and well, I kind of capitalized on that success. Now, I think the way the crevice that I crawled into is, like, right in there somewhere. But I'm gonna walk around the outside perimeter. I'm kind of enjoying the way that the world is streaming in also. As you can see off in the distance, the mountains are kind of melting away, revealing more trees. Uh, again, another sort of Katamari-like thing that I feel like, well, may not be a direct correlation, but for some reason just sort of evokes that in my own mind. Um, I wonder if there's just, like, a ramp here that I just missed, maybe. Kind of feels like I should be able to just climb right up. Maybe the, one of these mountains or hills is actually just low enough that I can just walk up it, and I think that is what this is right here. These sound effects seem to be not consistent, I've noticed, and I'm not sure if that's just due to the engine or maybe uh, the way that the sound effect is put together or something like that. But as I click a bunch of times, it seems like I get a sound effect like every so often. Uh, not that that exactly matters a whole lot to me, I'm just sort of saying that as just one of the minor little critiques. Because I do try to notice that kind of stuff. And it looks like there is a circle of no trees around me. Well, maybe this one I can reach if I jump just right. Also, there's one above me, which is making me not able to get the best height possible. Uh, oh, I made it up. So I guess this is kind of the premise, right? So we want to figure out unconventional ways to climb up these trees to then somehow get us as high as possible. Uh, that does seem sort of like what we're going for here, and I do like that premise, actually. It's quite an effective one, and one that I haven't seen a lot of uh, developers go for. Uh, there is just always this sort of uh, inbuilt instinct in people, I believe, that it's like, oh, let's climb something? Well, like, I want to climb my own personal Everest, I want to make a record happen, I want to, you know, be the best that I can be and all of that, and for some reason, uh, you know, raising vertical elevation definitely seems to evoke that feeling in people, this sort of intrinsic competitiveness, and even when you have a weird cartoony world like this, I think it does uh, the job that's intended. So we've got an angry pig here hidden in the bush, it's gone now. Uh, I've noticed, too, these bridges seem to have a little bit of iffy collision to them. I have actually fallen in between the slats, so I'm trying to be very careful uh, to walk in a way that will not lead to that happening, because it is a little frustrating. I mean, it may be also intentional, and I also may be missing a bit of control here. Uh, due to the fact that we've referenced something like Jumping Flash, I have to wonder, is there a button that I could have hit that will launch me up in the air, like, way, way higher than I've been going? Uh, and if that's the case, my apologies. I'm sure somebody will mention it in the comments, and you guys can be all the wiser as a result. I also feel like my perspective... Oh, I'm stuck in the bridge again. This happened on the last one. Uh, my perspective is very, very low to the ground, and I'm not sure quite if that's intentional or what, or maybe it's the scaling of everything that's making the perspective seem a little odd. Oh no! Disaster! Oh, wow. See, there's my feet, apparently, so maybe that's that's what the whole jumping flash thing is about. I did notice in one of the reflections once that I could actually see, like, the silhouette of my character, and it did look sort of like a weird fly with big feet, so I guess maybe that's what that's all about. I didn't even realize I could look down and see my own feet. Look at how colorful that is. Well, unfortunately, I've sort of fallen all the way back down to the ground level. I'm not sure if where I was going was actually going to help me in the end anyway. Uh, but I would like to believe that somehow I could have gotten up there, and I would really love to find this interior element that I saw in those screenshots too, because it looked like a totally different world. And this is cool enough by itself, but if we can get even further to different worlds in different places, well, I'm totally into that as well. Uh, is that mountain kind of like... Look like it maybe went to the left a little bit? Maybe there's like another place we can go to that I didn't realize? Uh, I'm not sure why the animals all want to kill me either. Oh. Unfortunately, they're not quite fast enough, nor do they have the accuracy necessary. Mm, nope, actually looks like that's still sealed off. Soundtrack also I quite like. Uh, I think this actually is just right. It's got the right upbeat tempo and sort of a positive vibe to it, which I think goes well with what we're looking at here. Why is that happening? Oh, the sun setting. Okay, that's actually kind of cool then. I was like, why are the shadows going up the mountain? I don't understand. We've got this ziggurat over here that I'd love to climb up. Maybe there is totally just like a button that makes me... Whoa. 
I guess I can hold down E and it'll just fire. Oh, well, I guess holding down left click will also fire too. Wait, is that... Is that like a little house up there on this mountain or something? Maybe this is, again, the, the shadows melting and playing tricks on me. And the reflections as well. It can be a little tough to tell what you're actually looking at. But I feel like this is a pretty fantastic journey already and we've only just started. Uh, I can only imagine when this developer really gets going where things will go from here. And what even awaits us up at the top at the 1,069 meter mark? It's hard to say from this point. Um, I hope the developer plays more with the light and dark element, too, because I really like where it is already, but if we add, like, you know, bioluminescent caves and crazy stuff like that, this has just a really unique art style, and I would love to see that pushed as far as it goes. Also, these trees kind of look like the tops of them could break off and roll around like hard candy bits, which I kind of like, too. Uh, and maybe, you know, at the end of this whole thing, we could get a giant Katamari ball and roll the whole thing up, and that would be pretty sweet as well. Anyway, I'm going to leave us on this note just because I feel like uh, for me to climb up these bridges again might end up in more disaster, and that would only be more frustrating than helpful. Uh, but feel free to go ahead and download the Fantastic Journey preview version that I'm playing right now. It does come in two parts, and you should go ahead and grab both. Those are kind of big files because it's an Unreal Engine 4 game, so just be aware of that before you get into it. Uh, but hopefully you can come and uh, discover some more stuff that I couldn't quite make it to, and let me know about it in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions about what you think of something like this, and where you think something like this might end up going in the scheme of things. Um, I should also probably press M for menu. Oh, okay, there's not much to look at here. The buttons do do stuff, though, in the menu, which on the uh, the main menu, I couldn't actually tell. There's no, like, user feedback when you click on them, but, you know, early version, I'm not upset about. I'm just saying that'll probably come in time. So with that, I will leave you for another day. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, that was another episode of Indie Impressions. These go up every single day. Links are going to be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it and be sure to come back again tomorrow and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, to get new videos every single day. Indie Impressions, a long-running series. We are now over the 900-episode mark, so if you're looking for games to try, uh, new, original, weird, unique, and artistic games... Also consider checking out Indie-Impressions.com, where all of the videos that I create here are all sorted and categorized by tags. So if you're looking for a free game, uh, surreal game, first-person game, shooter game, whatever it is that you're into, uh, you can click a button and get a list of those with all the videos that I've made for them. So anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you all tomorrow.